Hey, what's going on, friends? My podcast every day is broken up into two parts on the free platform. The first part, Act 1, is right now. When it's all done, go right on over to Act 2 to get the second half of the podcast. Thank you so much for checking out my show. Hello, 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 and welcome in to the Eric Zane Show podcast. A daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures from right here in the Im- Impact pa- Power Power Stereo FM studio. Sports. Sports stuff. Impact Power Sports Studio. Impact Power Sports. Uh, so you want to uh, ride around in a Yamaha golf cart or perhaps a brand new ATV, UTV, side-by-side, motorcycle, e-bike, you name it. They have it at Impact Power Sports. Online at Impact Power Sports, M-I- Dot com. I see Linda is here. She's known as Short Fuse Linda now, apparently. Uh, I will say this. One more thing about uh, Impact Power Sports. I will be there for their November 2nd grand reopening. 10 a.m. in Rockford, Michigan. I will see you there. You can shop online, impactpowersportsmi.com. So, top of mind. There are a lot of things that could be top of mind. Uh, But right now, top of mind for your old pal EZ is that the beloved Detroit Lions, winners, now, it's remarkable because there's plenty of people across the podcast audience that they don't, they don't follow football or, the, and, and if, if they do, they don't care about the lions, but just the amount of futility that they have had forever. They've been a huge pile of shit for the longest time. And I've been rooting for them throughout all of that. And now they've gotten this degree of success with another win yesterday in Minnesota, who Minnesota was in first place and Detroit went into Minnesota and they won the game. In fact, I want to play for you the final kick to win the game with the play-by-play of Lions radio announcer, uh, Dan Miller. That's right, Dan! Here you go. This is that moment when the Lions won the game against the Vikes. He's ready. It sounds a little low on my end, but that's not that's not on me. That's on them. He's ready. There's the snap. There's the spot. Kick away. It is up, and it is good. If you notice, that kick kind of curved two ways when he kicks it. It really messed with my brain because it started to go one way and then it went back the other way when he kicked that thing. That's not good. Spinning wheel of death breaks my heart. Perhaps a refresh will help this along. He's ready. There's the snap. There's the spot. Kick away. It is up and it is good. Jake that, Bar- that thing made like two or three direction changes. Sends it through with 15 seconds to go. The Lions have taken the lead. It is Detroit 31 and the Vikings 29. Jake Bates comes up huge in a big opportunity that might just have sent the Detroit Lions into first place in the NFC North. Okay, so a little bit about this guy, this this kicker, Jake Bates. He kicked, when he was in college football, he kicked zero field goals. The last time, his first field goal attempt was in the uh, one of those uh, minor league football leagues. The Michigan Panthers was the team. It had, the game happened to be at Ford Field. It was in March of 2024 when that guy went on the field to kick, and he made a 64-yard field goal. 
But the other team had called a timeout right when they were snapping the ball. So he had to kick it again. And he hit it again. He made it again. That kick was his first kick since high school. Now you're asking yourself, how the hell? What? Okay. When he was in college, he was a soccer player for some school. It doesn't matter. And then they said, hey, we need a guy on the football team who can kick off only. Can you be the kickoff specialist? And he's like, yeah, I can do that. So his job literally is to just kick the ball and it goes flying out of the end zone 80, every, every time. So he didn't attempt any field goals. They had another player for that. Well, you know, he doesn't really uh, have much of a ch- uh, shot at making an NFL roster if he's never even kicked a field goal before. But in one of those loser leagues, you know, they gave him a shot. And he made the most of it, so much so that the Lions gave him a chance in training camp on the strength of his uh, long kicks. Now, his accuracy was suspect, but they gave him a shot anyway. And this regular kicker for the Lions got hurt, so he's out, and then this guy gets the job. That's fantastic. You don't hear about those types of success stories. The fact that he never kicked a fucking field goal in college. But there he is winning the game for the Lions. Who? That was something. Um, The fact that they um, win on the road like that against a tough team. And at one point of the game, Minnesota took the lead late. And so a lot of people are like, okay, well, they got to do something. And then they got the ball back and they, they did, they got four and out, meaning they, they had to punt it back and everybody's like, oh, no, this is it. They're going to lose, but they didn't, they didn't, they, they pulled it out. It was fantastic. Hard to argue with this type of success. All right. We've had a great time uh, playing clips of Dan Campbell in his locker room speeches that he that he does he's legendary for these uh, he's known for these amazing locker room speeches after the game and I'll only really play them if they've uh, if they've won so this is Dan Campbell talking to my beloved Detroit Lions All right man Mr. Bright Boy, he's a little buddy, this kicker, Bates. Hey, how about the offense getting us in position, man, with like a minute and a half left, getting down there, man. We trust you guys with everything. And then field goal line, man, I know that's like the worst job in the world. I really appreciate you guys. And then Hogan and Jack, man. He won his stats. He won the game. All right, I got one offense, 15 rushes, 116 yards. All right, four receptions, 44 yards, got us down there, 160 all-purpose yards. Let's go, Jaw, get up. This is that guy that uh, uh, adopted the dog that Maureen wanted me to play. She like a, he like adopted a dog, and it was a, it was a big story in the news. Well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a big story. It was, it was a nice story. He adopted a dog that I think Maureen, I think Maureen rescued the dog. Like Maureen kicked in the door at some flop house in Flint and the dog, it was a German shepherd, was licking peanut butter off of some crack horse, you know what. And uh, Maureen said, (laughs) give me that dog. And she uh, killed everybody in the room, got the dog, brought it back, and Jameer Gibbs adopted it. You know, uh, I couldn't do any of this without y'all, uh, you know, coaches, you know, players, uh, you know, the whole organization. Uh, <laughs> I'm always shocked by how soft-spoken some of these guys are because when this guy runs with the ball, he has bad intentions. Like, he knocks the shit out of people when he hits them. <laughs> but yeah, like, like, we, like we say, uh, only team that could beat us is ourselves, so let's take every game week, week by week. Uh, you know, I love y'all. So. Yeah. Seems like a nice fella. 
stand with me on the offense. Eight receptions, 112 yards, one touchdown, Mr. St. Brown. Let's go. Love y'all, man. <laughs> All right, hey, last one on defense, man. Four tackles, one interception, two pass breakup. Really had a punch up for a touchdown. All right. BB, come back up. Here. Love y'all. All right, they're keeping it short. That's good. Hey, listen, man. To say that I'm proud of you would be the massive understatement. That's the way to come in here. Everything we talked about from the time we got to halftime to the way we had to finish it out, man. Composure, right? Communication, attitude, patience, patience. My God, man, you guys didn't bat an eye. I, I love this freaking team. I love the coaches. I love the players. I love everything about it, man. We are so freaking hardened. Even when shit doesn't go the way we want it to, man, you find a way. That is an outstanding win. We are 1-0 in the division, gentlemen. That's one. Break it down. Hey, 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 bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Hey, big boy win there. Oh. Division win on the road. Keep it going. Win on three, one, two, three. Win. Win. All right, so that's that. That is that. I I guess, um, you know, to me, as a fan for a long, long time, um, it, it it's starting to be, uh, uh, to a point, something that we haven't really experienced where, you know, the game's kind of getting away from them, but then they're like, ah, oh, we got this. And then they just go out and win it. I mean, in the past, that's a game that they lose. But... Look the fuck out. Holy shit. Now, next up for the beloved Detroit Lions, they host the hard luck Tennessee Titans, who they have uh they've got a rough go of it. You know, last year they got they had that um well they ended up getting rid of their running back, Derrick Henry, their best player. Okay. So uh poor Kenny's Tennessee Titans, they're probably gonna get hammered. But you never know. You know, maybe they'll put it together. But the Lions uh, will host them in Detroit. And you're like, oh, God. Tennessee's won like one game. They kind of have stunk. But, uh, all right. Uh, D Hop will be gone in a couple of weeks or less. You watch. I'm not sure who that is. He's one of the better players for that team. Uh, Nick in Houston said, writes, did he say we are so freaking hard? No, no. I, I think he said hardened, you know, like a, like a blade. I think. Uh, Kenny writes, we all know the lions are going to win this upcoming week. Go ahead and count it as done. All right, Linda has changed her name to Short Fuse Linda uh, because last week, after a few days of referencing uh, her, she went crazy on the podcast and uh, told me to go fuck myself. It was a horrible moment, and I said, oh, my God, what a temper on her. She's feisty. And Maureen said, ha! We all have short fuses. I don't believe that you do. I, well, if you do, it's not as short as Linda's. Oh, my God. What a fucking hothead she is. God damn. Uh, all right. But hello to you. I hope you all had a good week. Weekend, I should say. So this was like all of the stars aligned. Because as it's been talked about on this show, thank you to Wolverine Bronco. For just uh, subscribing. I appreciate that. Our very own Joe Martinez. A lot of folks were looking forward to today to give Joe shit. Because all of the things fell into place that make him. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he's. Uh, he, he'll just make up some other type of scenario that, that fits his mindset with the Lions winning and Michigan losing and Michigan State winning. Um, but he's not able to be with us today, unfortunately, because he is undergoing a medical procedure. And some of you are like, oh, yeah, right, sure. He's just not here to take his punishment. 
But no, he he actually does have a medical procedure. He told me about it. It's not really my story to tell. He's just down for a little bit. Um, should be okay. <coughs> it is a when the doc says, "Hey, we got to do a test," and because I would love to rub his face and shit after Illinois just brutalizes Michigan. Oh my God. All right. And, um, I went ahead and thank you to David, uh, David for subscribing. We were close to a hype train. I'm not sure what that means, but we're close to a hype train. It tells me. Linda says, delay the beat ups till tomorrow. No, no, I got to get it done now. He'll end up listening to this. It's better because he can't respond in real time. Uh, Jackass has said, uh, we bow to no one, senor. We are Michigan. We will bust them nuts. Aye, aye, aye. And uh, th- this is now the third team that Michigan is bowing to. They bow to Texas. They bowed to Washington. Uh, and now they bow to Illinois. Bob says they got it worse than Rick's pets. Michigan has um, potential to win maybe just one more game. Michigan State beats Iowa. That was huge. Now, that sets the stage. You got two teams going in the opposite directions. Michigan on the way down. Michigan State on the way up. Michigan State is at Michigan as, uh, uh, what's his name? What's the fucking comic's name who hates Don Veltman? I forget his name. He says Michigan. Uh, Michigan hosts Michigan State at the big house. All right. And then let's see the rest of Michigan, uh, Michael Rappaport. That's it. Okay. So if Michigan loses that game against Michigan state, they then host Oregon who's undefeated. They then host, then they're on the road at Indiana who is undefeated. Then they host Northwestern who's not very good. And then they're on the road at Ohio State. Uh, they have potential to go five and seven this year because they're probably going to beat Northwestern, but maybe not. There is a possibility they don't win a game for the rest of the year. Their easiest game is Northwestern. It's going to be a dog fight at Michigan against Michigan State. Spartans have a decent quarterback and they have some weapons. Who's that receiver? The young guy He's like uh, 11 or 12 years old. I forget. I don't know. Jeremy says, I said in the chat like three weeks ago that Michigan wasn't going to make a bowl game. You have to win six to be in a bowl game. Boy, that would be something. And I posted about this on Facebook and oh my God. Uh, I, I, I posted hail LOL on there. And, uh, by the way, only a minute 30 left in the time to get a hype train. So if you subscribe, you give a gift to someone or you use bits, then I get to level two and I don't even know what the fuck that means. So there you go. If you subscribe on Twitch, you give a gift subscription to another member of the audience or you use your bits, then easy gets to level two. Kenny says, and how long have you been on Twitch? I don't know, years, but I'm still at level one. I don't think I'm doing something right on this. I think I'm failing miserably. Uh, Corey says, wow, look at Zane learning Twitch terms. 
Well, I'm only saying that because it's written in front of me. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Bits, I think is that, isn't it money? You're, you're actually giving me money when you give me bits. Whatever. Like it fucking matters. Okay. So, and then there's the idea that, um, <laughs> Corey subscribed. All right. I'm at 93% with five seconds remaining. Can we get a hype train in three, two, one? No, no hype train. The level restarts each train. It's not like if you get to level two, you'll be at level two forever. Oh, so what they want, this is what Twitch wants. This is how they make their money. They like make me go, oh, come on, get on the train. (laughs) And then you give me your money. And then it goes to level two and the timer starts counting down. So then I'm like, oh, we got to get to level two. Yeah, whatever. Twitch gets some of that stupid money. Nick says, I tried. I'm sitting on 350,000 bits. That's a lot of bits. I don't know how you get so many of those damn bits. Uh, Nick from the arena is uh lover boy, Nick. He informed me that on Saturday he had a, or I'm sorry, on Friday, he was on the phone for two hours with a lady. He's going to have a first date with two hour phone call. There could have been some flirty flirty in there for our, uh, one of our newly single members of the audience. That would be Nick in the arena. And this was followed up by a Sunday date. Wow. You guys are busy because Kenny had a three plus hour phone call last night. Oh my God. I can just imagine what that's like. Lots of single people on here. I'm curious how the big date went. Uh, Ben Glaze is here. He says Michigan will finish at five and seven. Going from number one to no bull game. Um, Meanwhile, speaking of Ben Glaze, I, 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 I got to get to this story. It, this is incredible. So our pal Ben Glaze, he came up with the name Ben Glaze when we were on the radio because we were watching American Idol and uh, one of the competitors was a guy named Ben Glaze. So we're like, Hey, uh, why don't we, how about I give you that name? Or I don't know. I think it was something like that. And the next thing, you know, uh, Ben Glaze is, uh, is born and our very own Ben is now known as Ben Glaze going forward. So, I mean, if you looked up Ben Glaze comedy, there he is, you know, he has, He has created the brand Ben Glaze. So there you go. See, if you look up Ben Glaze comedy shows, Instagram, X, Spotify, the Ben Glaze podcasting series. Okay. All these things, Ben Glaze, Dr. Grin's comedy club. It's all over the place. Oh, And at the bottom, it says Ben Glaze faces child porno charges. So the guy whose name is really Ben Glaze, not our Ben Glaze, is in trouble for child porno. Oh no, this, 
Okay. And the guy's face. So that means if Ben Glaze, our very own Ben Glaze, is looking for a job one day, whatever you do, don't use the name Ben Glaze at all for anything. You might have to wipe that from the internet. Because this guy, who also has a, 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 well, I guess kind of a beard and mustache, also like our very own Ben Glaze, he's like a younger version of our Ben Glaze, a younger, thinner version. My God. Ben, the Ben Glaze, the one from American Idol, is in trouble. This is, uh, you know, if you remember, Katy Perry kissed him during the audition. And um, for whatever reason, it was like a made-for-TV moment. And then afterwards, he was, like, affected by it. He acted like he was all hurt. And he thought it was inappropriate that Katy Perry kissed him. Little did we know, he was probably to himself, yeah, it's inappropriate because you're not a little child. According to the Tulsa, Oklahoma PD Facebook post, Ben Glaze was arrested after the force's sexual predator digital evidence recovery unit allegedly received info that Ben Glaze was in possession of child sexual abuse material. Cops say they executed a warrant and claim they found more than 700 images and videos of sexual abuse material of minors on his smartphone. My God. They arrested him on Friday. He was booked into the jail, charged with one count of aggravated possession of child porno and released on a $50,000 bond on Friday night. My God. So our very own Ben Glaze is like, what the fuck? Sorry, Ben. Corey says more like Ben glazing on kids. Uh, Maureen suggests this is all Katy Perry's fault. And Hazmat says, was that the guy who sang Young Enough? No, no, that was another dude who was dating. He was an older guy dating a young chick. She was like 17 or 18. And he would sing that creepy song, Young Enough. God damn. Uh, Ben says that I called him Ben Glaze after the bit. And that's how the nickname was born. My God. Nick says his date went well. She might be too much of a city slicker. I need a sturdy wood stacking girl. Not sure what you mean by that. Are you suggesting a woman who uh, splits wood? I don't know, makes chili over a fire. Uh, drinks like ice cold Paps beer and listens to Kid Rock. Is that is that who you're looking for? Hey everybody, it's your pal EZ to talk about one of my amazing partners, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile's done it right, you know. If you're like a sucker who's uh, trapped paying tons of money to big wireless, it's time to end that cycle. You see, with big wireless, what you see is never what you get. Somewhere between the store and your first month's bill, the price you thought you were paying magically skyrockets. I've seen this happen so many times, especially with Pooh Bear, when she, like, uh, uh, breaks her phone and gets a new one. Oh, yeah, it's only going to cost me this much. And get home, and it's a complete disaster. I need, like, uh, you know, a personal loan to pay the bill. With Mint Mobile, you'll never... Have to worry about the gutches ever again. (laughs) When Mint Mobile says $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan, they mean it. Okay, Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans. I do this, and you should too. My bill went from astronomical to $15 a month for my phone. 
All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Uh, The game is up for Big Wireless. We are on to you. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash Zane. That's mintmobile.com slash Zane. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Zane. $45 upfront payment required. That's equivalent to 15 bucks a month. New customers on first three month plan only. Speeds slower over 40 gig on unlimited plan, but you'll be fine. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. As a, you know, doesn't put on any makeup. You know, uh, might not bathe for a few days. So more like north of the of the hard living line. Is that is that what you like? Nick says you forgot where's camo. Maureen says like a farm girl, such as Linda, perhaps. So Maureen is suggesting that, you know, you call upon Linda. <clears throat> I don't know if she fits your description, though. Corey makes a disgusting comment of she needs to split wood if she wants her ham split. Good God. All right. It is time to update the Fatathon. Uh, when we last met last week at this time, Kenny dropped 2.4 and Corey dropped 5.5. The boys then, Kenny weighed 316.2 and uh, Jeremy went down to, uh, he's at 305.9. They have sent in their weights. They are both down again which is excellent. Keep going in that direction. Jeremy has dropped 3.3 pounds in the last week. Kenny has dropped 0.8. That has him thinking he is at a plateau. That puts him, you're in the right direction. That's all you can hope for. That means you're down 315 to 315.4. In the past two weeks, you are down 3.2. That's a healthy amount of weight. Good job. Uh, Jeremy down 3.3. Jeremy at 302.6 pounds. Jeremy knocking on the door. He has potential to be sub 300 for the first time in how long, Jeremy? And again, this all starts... Because he uh, he found out that his former old lady was cheating on him while she was dating him, and he had kind of like a low point several weeks ago. I think I don't know the exact date, but it was on a Monday. You started at three thirty five point four. You're down to three hundred two point six. Um, so you got a little bit to go to be under three hundred. Keep it going. This is going to take a long, long time. And Kenny, the point eight giving you the uh, idea that perhaps you're at a plateau. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's like Jocko good. Only down point eight uh, gives you an opportunity to drop even more. So you know whatever you got to do, keep on the right track with your diet. Maybe lift a little weights, take a little walkie walk, whatever you need to do. Keep doing it, but do more. Do more. Your life depends on it. Your kids are like, oh my God, dad, you're doing so great and you're saving your life so we can see you again. Jeremy, his goal, actually get a woman um, who's not disgusting. And the more you lose weight, the better off your options are. For both of you, frankly. Keep it up. 
That's not easy work. There's no question. Uh, All right. It was a hockey weekend for your old pal, EZ. As uh, Jeremy writes, my first goal is 300 by Halloween. And then he adds, I am proud of myself and I'm proud of Kenny for doing this. Yeah, Kenny's down a ton of weight. I mean, combine you guys. Uh, Kenny's about down 50. Well, he was at 360 to start. So if that's what? 15, uh, that's nearly 45 pounds. So 45 plus nearly 35. That's in the neighborhood of 80 pounds that you two guys have lost. Good work. It's a marathon. It's a fatathon, not a fat a sprint. That doesn't quite work. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It's going to take time. Like in a year, we should have been talking about this for, you know, upwards of 60 straight weeks. That's how much time you have for yourself. So relax. You've got time. Maureen has dropped 80 pounds in the last year. Wow. That is impressive. Excellent work. One of the things I like to do at the hockey game is talk to the refs and the opposing players. Same thing happened this weekend, but I I have like a methodology. I do not remember any of these people like I don't I don't know any of them on a first name basis for the most part I'm always just pleasant to them but I get a lot of interactions where they're like hey how you doing it's been a while so I'm always like well I I know these guys now what I don't know is um actually I'm not going to say that yet I come walking off the ice after the first period on Friday night. And one of the linesmen skates up and says, hey, you know, the old fist bump walking across the ice. I got to take a leak. They're going in to rest up for the next period. The one ref, the linesman is super tall. And he skates up and I go, oh my God, you're still growing. He looks at me kind of funny. I go, you've grown since the last time I've seen you. That's like something an old man would say, you know, ha, 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 ha. Oh yeah. Old man talk. Hey, you're still growing. What do you think he said? Because I wouldn't be telling you this story if this was not another Eric Zane awkward moment. What do you think the ref, the linesman said to me after I said that? Again, I have no reason to tell you this story if it's not an awkward interaction. I'm guessing somebody's going to figure this out. Jeremy says, quote, did he say, and you're still a little fella. Kenny says, do I know you? Nick says, don't let me down. Tophus says, I don't take candy from strangers. Chris is correct with, I've never met you before. That's what he's now. He said, he goes, Oh, this is my first trip here. Then I'm like, well, of course it is. Of course it is. Yep. I've never, I'm just trying to be friendly. Of course you've never been here before. I'm an idiot. Oh, boy, you're still growing. You look here and you're you're so tall. You've grown a lot since the last time I saw you. I've never been here before. Oh, God. I go, oh, well, you remind me of uh, another guy. Stupid. Corey says, just stop talking to people. Exactly. I don't know why I do this. Mm -mm. Damn it. Stupid.
so awkward. Then um, prior to that, before the game, the other team skates out. The Manitoba Moose. And um, I'm busy doing what I do to prepare. I'm going over the script, what we need to hit on, you know, just basic shit. And I got my glasses on on the edge of my nose, and I happen to look up as the one of the def, one of the players for the Manitoba Moose is skating towards me, and he makes eye contact, and he points. He goes, "Yeah, yeah," and I'm like, "What the fuck? Who the fuck is this guy?" I look at his number eighteen, and it's uh, Mason Shaw. Now, I have no, I'd have no idea, none. As to who this is. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, if I'm lucky, he won't get a penalty. If he doesn't get a penalty, that means he won't be in the penalty box. If he's in the penalty box, I'm going to have to talk to him. Four minutes into the game, he gets a penalty. Fuck, here we go. Of course he did. He skates over. He sits down. I announce the pe- puck drops. I announce the penalty. I go, hey, Mason Shaw, how are you? Oh, not bad, Zayner. How you been? Doing okay. Doing okay. How's the family? Oh, they're beauty. Uh, yeah, you know, hey, Hixie says hi. I'm like, Hixie. Like, I'm thinking to myself, are you referring to Joe Hicketts? Oh, not sure. So I say, oh, Hixie. Yeah, how's he doing? She goes, oh, Hixie's fine. Oh, yeah, he's great, eh? Uh, uh, he's over in Ontario. He's a captain. The Ontario Reign, which is actually Ontario, California. I go, no kidding. He's a captain. Oh, yeah, he's loving the beach, eh? You know, I mean, like, he gets a day off. And, uh, you know, they, like, hit the hit the surf and sand. So cool. He goes, I go, where did you play with Hixie? He goes, Iowa. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we were on the same team in Iowa, eh? And I go, and then I'm. it's confirmed in my head. He's talking about Joe Hicketts, who played in Grand Rapids. And now, but I don't remember any ever meeting this guy. So amazingly, it kind of ended there. And I didn't, um, I I didn't really make an asshole out of myself, but I I had to kind of like, it was very awkward and uncomfortable as I'm tiptoeing my way through that conversation, knowing what I'm capable of. And just to hear him address me, with my hockey nickname, which I don't ever use, but the, for some reason, hockey players always call me Zayner. Oh, hey, Zayner. That's a hockey thing. You know, the, the, the nicknames are just incredible. They're always... So then I texted... I, I'm in the... He's still there sitting next to me, and I texted Hicketts. Um. Hey, Joey, it's EZ. Mason Shaw is in the box with me, and we chatted about you. He seems like a great guy. I hope you're doing well. He writes, hey, Zayner. Yeah, Shawzy's an awesome dude. Doing well. Can't beat the beach life, LOL. How's things with you? And that's about it. Um, I said, still grinding podcast has grown. Things are a lot of work, but well worth it. Do you still talk to pumps? Matt Pumple. Nice. Haven't talked to pumps in a bit. Uh, send them the odd note, but nothing really. Gotcha. I hope your family's doing well. They were always super nice to me. I think I would talk to your mother and your grandmother. LOL. Ha ha. Probably old Grams. She's a classic. Uh, this is my 20th year doing PA for the Griffs. You are hands down the most beloved person that I ever watched play. The fans absolutely loved you. 20, eh? You're going to catch dogs soon at that rate. Ha ha, thanks. Oh, 
All right. Every hockey player's last name ends in R. Fact. That's true. Or Y. Hixie. Shazer. Or you can just shorten it. Like Pumple is Pumps. All right. Uh, Joe Higgins is great. I remember one time I was talking to him on the, on the air on BBL. We were like doing a, whatever, a hockey update or some shit. And every time he talks, it sounds like he's sorry. And I go, are your teeth in right now? Did you put your teeth in? Oh, uh, no, 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 Zaner. How did you know? I can hear it. Put your fucking teeth in. Okay. <laughs> Okay, how's that, eh? My God. I go, yeah, when you talk to people, put your teeth in. You sound retarded. Come on now. Uh, all right, thanks to the folks who are watching on Facebook and YouTube. I appreciate you so much. But I'm about to kick you out. Sign up on Patreon for seven days free. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. I had a couple folks who tried it over the weekend who signed up, Uh, that would be Chase B. Thank you to you. And um, Eric S. Signed up for seven days free. The way you do this, you sign up for the seven days free at patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Cancel it right after, huh? Yeah, you still get the seven days for free. When that ends, after you've explored and enjoyed the content, You're like, okay, the trial is over. Now I want it. I actually want it. You can go back into your little uh, profile and enable your card and allow uh, me to charge it five or $10 a month for the content that I create $5 a month for the audio, $10 a month for the audio video and live streams included with that is who are these free beers? 30 episodes in the books of who are these free beers. You can get lost in that content alone. Chris says, totally worth it. Do it. Chris has suggested that on Patreon, when we're doing the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, um, in that show, we review the Ben Glaze Bomity podcast. We need to go back in time six years to the very first podcast that I did and review it. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's a huge pile of shit. Patrick says, I feel like I'm ripping Zane off every year when my card gets charged. Uh, Kenny writes, episode number one. If you know, you know. All right. Thank you to so much, or thank you so much to you for watching the show on um, Facebook and YouTube. Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. The open and live stream. Happens in part thanks to the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Buy now. Refinance later. Uh, As EZ begins the process to be north of the hard living line uh, vacation rental slumlord, uh, I will be engaging with the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, getting mortgages for each of those properties. We will be buying and renting out. 231 332 6505 for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. 231 332 6505. That's my go to mortgage guy, and it can be yours too from anywhere in the U.S. at 231 332 6505. Call Mario and mention me. If you're looking for a fun time with the kids, bros from the neighborhood, college buddies, 
high school friends, whatever it may be, bachelor party, workplace team building, TC paintball. All right. Ask about the dog beaten special. TC paintball GR.com. You can find them online. You can find them on Facebook. Call and schedule an, uh, an event today at tcpaintballgr.com. They've got a cutout of Linda there. All right, bent over in the garden You that you can shoot. Uh, t- Rick has that. He just set it up there. Anyway, uh, TC Paintball online at tcpaintballgr.com. When it comes to insurance, Frank Fuss is an absolute legend on this show. You go to buyinsurancehere.com if you want to sign up for Obamacare. People who would do this, perhaps you are in between jobs, all right? Maybe you are self-employed or your employer doesn't offer insurance. Or maybe you use your boss's insurance and you want your spouse to sign up on healthcare.gov. These are all things that you can do, but it takes time to sign up, uh, go to the website, fill out all the shit, and then you might screw it up. Have Frank Fuss do it all for you, and it doesn't cost you one dime. That's what Frank's, uh, Frank does. Uh, schedule a get-to-know-you session at buyinsurancehere.com. That is buyinsurancehere.com. Uh, last sponsor for this batch is Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. Save the date for December 20. That is the Friday. That is when we are hosting the great food giveaway at Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. Fantastic place to get your car, your EV, or your hybrid repaired. They are the best along 44th Street, a few blocks east of 131. For more than 30 years, they've been doing this. Okay? Uh, They've grown over time. They are second to none and the best in the business, so much so that the dealerships, when they have exhausted their expertise, they reach out to Irvine's for a helping hand. That's true. In fact, Folks, if you have left a Google review in the past, can you please go into it and edit it? When you do that, uh, the big Google machine thinks, oh my God, these guys are on fire. Everybody's talking about them. And uh, that makes so that more people through Google uh, see what Irvine's has to offer. ervines.com. That's ervines.com. We were out and about this weekend. Uh, The plan was, I had two things I had to do. Well, one thing for sure I had to do, and that was winterize the stupid fraud bus. The damn fraud bus, as of yesterday, had been in the driveway for eight days, seven days, Sunday to Sunday. So, they're about the HOA rules say two days and I always break it and I feel bad. One time I left it in for two days and I had to get it out of there, but I was going to take it and drop it off at the place where I store it and then pick it up the next day. So it was literally going to be gone for one day. I went up to HOA guy and I said, look, man, can I just keep it here? Because I'm going to pick it up at the end of the week. And he's like, well, that means it will be there for four days. And no, you can't. And I said, no problem. I understand. So I took it back. Now this time, I did not do that. I just left it there. And I know that HOA guy saw it because he lives two doors down. So all the while, I'm just waiting for the text or the knock on the door to say, look, man, you got to get that thing out of here. Why? Why is this a thing? I don't know. I think they just like the neighborhood 
um, to not be cluttered. And I appreciate that. They have rules. Did I obey these rules this time? Not a bit. But I kind of was stuck. So um, last Sunday, I drop it off. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to winterize it tonight. I did not. And then Monday happened. Tuesday happened. Wednesday happened. Thursday happened. I haven't done shit. Uh, Chris says the asshole of the day should be homeowners associations. I, I don't think so. I don't think they've done anything wrong. Before I get to that, Kenny writes, Eric, I just found an image online of Rick's paintball target practice doggos and emailed it to you. Now, wait a minute here. Um, I don't know if I want to, if I want to open up that Pandora's box, I don't think Rick would like it very much with that suggestion being made. Are you going to get me in trouble here? I mean, because I just picture like a dog, uh, like, uh, an, an image that is like horrible. What I'm saying is I don't, I don't trust you. All right. He, he says it's safe and it is. <laughs> is this one of those AI generated ones? I don't know what those dogs are doing, but I'm pretty sure it's not paintball. It looks to be some type of dog color run. He says it is. I just made it. Wow, that's pretty good. Uh, side note, I'm totally uh, breaking out on tangents here. Uh, last night, we're watching the Lions game and um, or during the day, and Madison is sitting on the floor, so it's all big family time. And uh, she's doing what Madison does, painting. She's got like a canvas on the ground, and she's doing some type of painting. And um, she doesn't, she's not paying attention. And the next thing you know, Darla's walking around with blue paint all like she stuck her face in it and, went, and it's all like on her tongue and she's like <laughs> spitting it out. It's going all over the place. We're like what the fuck? Holy shit. And uh, so we had to like wash her mouth out of the poor thing. Uh, Chris says, dang, it's getting serious. Easy watching the game and not listening to Lomas. Well, no, I, I did listen to 90% of that game. This was just the one time I was seated there. I love listening to Dan and Lomas, you know, despite the fact that, uh, I think they, that they actually stink. Um, I love listening to them. Dan Miller coming unglued is uh, always fun. You know, Chris says that Dan Miller's name is actually again, Dan. I believe that. Um, all right, so the fraud bus is there for that many days. That was part of my part of my weekend. I will finish this after the staff meeting. I have the Q100 staff meeting next. So I will be back in, uh, I don't know, about 30 minutes or so with the rest of this show. Thank you so much for being here. I'll talk to you then. D look out for it. It's going to be about 30 minutes. Okay. I want I want you to be there for it. Have a good one. I'll talk to you in a bit. Bye. All right. That is act one of the podcast. Act two is available right after this one. Go check it out. What are you doing? Don't miss a second of it. Thank you so much.